Hi and welcome to Economics. My name is Ahmed Abu Rashid and I will be your economics teacher for the upcoming academic year. I come from an, un from an interdisciplinary background in business and the humanities and I look forward to seeing and working with you all. In this video we will discuss what you can expect out of the course throughout the year, what topics we'll be covering and how your work will be assessed. So let's begin by taking a look at the course overview. So economics examines the allocation of scarce resources and the economic reasoning used by government agencies, as well as by individuals, businesses, and so on and so forth. So economics in a nutshell is a study of scarcity and choice. This applies on an individual level, on a group level, at a national level, and at a global level. So let's go on and dig into what the course contains and what we will, we will be studying in detail. So we begin with the fundamental concept that we just mentioned, scarcity. Scarcity refers to the limited nature of resources in the face of unlimited wants. In other words, we have limited resources, but limitless desires. This creates the need to make choices about how to allocate these resources efficiently. Moving on to topic two, which follows from topic one, we explore economic systems. One of the most prevalent is free enterprise, where private individuals and businesses operate without significant government in intervention. But there are other systems too, like socialism and communism each with its own way of distributing resources and managing the economies. Next up, we have the cornerstone of microeconomics, that is demand, supply, and prices. The demand and supply of goods and services determine their price, determines their price in the market. So when demand exceeds supply, prices rise and vice versa. It's a delicate balance that shapes market dynamics. As we delve deeper, we encounter competition and market structures. From perfect competition to monopolies, different market structures affect pricing, consumer choice, and innovation. Healthy competition promotes efficiency and benefits consumers. So shifting gears a little bit, let's discuss the relationship between business and labor. So in topic five, uh, we will see how businesses aim to maximize profits while labor or workers seek fair wages and, and fair working conditions. Striking this balance is a crucial for, uh, aspect of a thriving economy and a content workforce. Now let's turn our attention back a little bit to um, the economy and money, banking and financial markets. So money, what is money? Money serves as a medium of exchange and banks play a crucial role in lending and managing the money supply. Financial markets facilitate the buying and selling of assets that you may be familiar with, such as stocks, bonds, currencies, and so on. So as economies evolve, they face various challenges. So economic performance uh, indicators like GDP, the unemployment rate, uh, inflation, they reveal the overall health of an economy. These indicators help policymakers identify and address potential issues. The next topic on our list is taxes and spending. Governments levy taxes to generate revenue, which is then used to fund public goods and services, such as infrastructure, education, and healthcare. Balancing tax rates and government spending is essential for economic stability. Let's now delve into fiscal and monetary policy. So governments use fiscal policy and by fiscal we mean taxes and the spending of these taxes uh, to promote uh, economic activity, to stimulate or to limit inflation. The same is done by the central banks. But when these, what we call monetary policy implemented by central banks consists of variations and changes in interest rates. 
again, they have a major, major influence on the, on the economy, on the growth of the economy, and on things such as inflation. Finally, we come to trade development and globalization. So international trade enables countries to specialize in what they do best and exchange goods and services. Globalization connects economies, cultures, and people, leading to both opportunities, but of course, nonetheless, it is not free of challenges. So this was a little tour of the fundamental topics in economics, from scarcity to globalization. These concepts shape the way we understand and interact with the world around us. So thank you for hanging in so far. Let's have a word about the assessment policy and in-class uh, procedures. So in terms of assessment, every term is split into two parts. Assessment one is a test focused uh, type of assessment, whereas assessment two is a project based assessment. Both make up 70% of the grade divided equally between one another as 35%. And they wrap up with the remaining 30% in the form of an end of semester exam, be it a midterm or a final. In terms of behavior and respecting the classroom, it is of the utmost, utmost importance that students respect their school, respect uh, their classmates, and respect their teachers and administrators. We want to create and encourage a productive and fruitful environment so that we can have a smooth and very uh, effective year. So I'd like to thank you for listening in so far. I look forward to delving into all of the topics we discussed in much more detail. I look forward to us visiting the um, and applying these concepts, these abstract theoretical concepts into real life, studying real businesses and real economies so that we can grow as people and make better decisions. Thank you.